I tell you, one of the happiest days in my life was when they called me and said, okay, Jeannie, your wish is coming true. You're gonna make a picture with Gene Autry and oh, Pooh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> but it just goes to prove to you, if any of you have a dream, don't you ever give up on it, ever. Because it's in your heart. It is, it's important. Jane Withers was in a Gene Autry movie for her studio, 20th Century Fox, not Republic, but 20th Century Fox, and guess what? She was top billed over Gene Autry in that oh, film. That <laughs> so here we, here we have Jane Withers, and, and i tell you one other thing. People don't remember, but they should, that Jane was a superstar in the 30s. She was in a movie with Shirley Temple, Bright Eyes, in 1934. I was the meanest, creepiest kid God ever put on this planet. <laughs> Woo! And she stole the movie by being so mean and creepy. And 20th Century Fox said, well, we, to keep Shirley in line, we're going to sign Janie to a contract, too, and star her in her own films, which they did. And she was 49. Wow. Now, you're from Atlanta, so uh, how Atlanta, did this, Georgia, uh, originally. This, this Western love happen? How did that come about? Well, every, every Saturday, Mom would take me to see the movies because I had my own radio show at 3. I know that sounds ridiculous. But from 3 to 6, I was known as, are you ready for this? Dixie's Dainty Dewdrop. <laughs> what a moniker. <laughs> But anyway, that's what I was known as. I had my own radio show, and I introduced a lot of young kids that had never had a chance to do things on the radio. I made sure they did. When I was growing up, one of the great shows was Cisco Kid with uh, Duncan Ronaldo and Leo Carrillo. You did two films with Leo. That's right. He was a very close friend. He had a wonderful ranch in Santa Barbara, and so often my mom and dad and my bodyguards and my secretary, we'd go down for the weekend. And, uh, oh no, Leo and I were close buddies. We'd go horseback riding, at, we'd get up at 4 a.m., go horseback riding, then we'd go fishing. I loved to fish. My dad and I used to do a lot of fishing together. I married a, a cowboy from Texas, darling, and uh, Bill Moss in, in, from Odessa, Texas. So we moved there, and he had also a ranch in New Mexico. So I used to ride fence, and, and uh, I learned to do all those things that the real cowboys did. And when we first got to the ranch, <laughs> I think you'd get a hoot out of this. I was the only lady that had ever been on the ranch before. And I thought, oh, crumb bunny, those 15 men, they're going to just hate me the sight of me because I'm a lady and the only one up there. Well, I thought, please, God, I sure need your help. So the first day I got there, I lined them all up and said, howdy, boys, I'm Jane, and you tell me each your names and we'll get to know each other better. But I said, I'm not here to change anything, especially any of you gentlemen. I'm here to learn and I'm scared to death. I'm a new bride, I've never been married before, and I just want to be a good wife and hopefully a mother. I want five children, and I'm going to learn how to cook, and you just show me how you like, and then I'll fix it your way. So that's what we did for about 10 years, and it was a joyful experience to work with real cowboys, and they taught me so many wonderful things. What I'm curious about is how did the film with Gene Autry happened. Did you know about Gene before? Did I know about it? Good gravy. If it hadn't been for me, it had never been made. <laughs> this lady, when she makes up her mind to do something, with God's help, of course, I said, Lord, more than anything in the world, I want to make a movie with Gene Autry. He's my super favorite. I've never met him, but I just feel with all my heart and soul that we're a lot alike in a lot of ways. The things I've read about him, some of the friends he has, we, we like a lot of the same things, and we appreciate all the good things in life. When we like seeing, like to make people happy. Well, that made me happier than anything in the world. But I finally got the nerve one day after I was having school. So I picked up the phone and I called the head of my studio. He gave me a number and said, Jenny, if there's anything you ever need or want, call me. I said, please remember those words, Mr. Skink. <laughs> 
I'm only eight years old, but I have very definite ideas of what I want to do while I'm working in films. And I love to make people happy better than anything in the world. And the letters I get from hundreds and hundreds of kids and their families, dear Gussie, they seem to like the movies I make. Well, I like the movies Gene Autry makes, and I want to make a movie with him. He said, Good grief, that would be box office dynamite. I thought, whoopee, we've got, got a good thing going. I said, okay, what do we do to make it happen? He said, well, number one, of course, we couldn't possibly let you go to Republic. I said, why not? I've never been to any other studio, and I'm still under contract to Fox, but people borrow other stars all the time. He said, yes, but you're sixth in box office of all the stars in the world. Gene is number one at Republic, and he said, I know that Republic would never let him come to 20th Century Fox. I said, Mr. Skink, you haven't asked yet. And I said, I won't take that for a, for a no, because I'm a very positive thinking lady. And I just think this is possible, and I think we can make a lot of people happy by doing this movie together. Long story short. We cut to Mr. Uh, uh, at Republic. Yates. Yates, Mr. thank you. Mr. Herbert Yates. I called the, at, at the studio and I said, who runs your outfit here? <laughs> and they said, well, uh, uh, you, you mean the CEO? I said, Whoever runs your outfit, who's the head man? I want to talk to him and nobody else. They said, uh, well, a little girl, a lot of people would like to talk to him. He's very, very busy. I said, lady, you should see my schedule. <laughs> Back to Mr. Yates's office. I said, Mr. Yates, I'll come right to the point. I know we're both busy. I want to make a film with Gene Autry. He said, ooh, that would be box office dynamite. I said, thank you, God, again. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, we talked a bit. He said, well, of course, Fox would never let us borrow you. I said, I've been through that with Mr. Skink, sir. But I have an idea. You know, we've got some wonderful leading ladies at Fox. And why couldn't we trade three or four of those leading ladies for one Gene Autry. And maybe Gene could come to Fox to my studio. He said, hey, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> anyway, it worked. Thank you, God. It took about nine months to make it happen. But I tell you, one of the happiest days in my life was when they called me and said, okay, Jenny, your wish is coming true. You're going to make a picture with Gene Autry and oh, poo, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but it just goes to prove to you, if any of you have a dream, don't you ever give up on it, ever. Because it's in your heart. It is. It's important. I'm so sorry. But my, my dream really came through. I finally met Jean. Just from the moment we said howdy, we were pals. We were good pals. When he'd go on tour with the boys at the, that worked behind him in the band, uh, he would carve with his pocket knife that he'd had since he was 16 years old. Out of balsam wood, he would make me things for my doll collection, my cowboy dolls. He made me a holster, the greatest gun you ever saw. I'm so <laughs> proud of those things. Boy, how did they mean more than either the Academy Award. But Gene was so special to me. He was everything I believed he would be, and even more so. He was the brother I never had, the best friend. I had a lot of boyfriends, uh, not boyfriends, boyfriends. Uh, big difference. And, and uh, anyway, uh, Gene was just special in every way. I was never, ever disappointed in anything we ever shared together. And to me, I've always felt that anything is nicer when it's shared. But boy, howdy, when you can share it with a real friend. Isn't that the best thing in the world? Yeah. Yeah. Gene was the very first singing cowboy to hit the big time, and uh, certainly he was huge. Did you get to sing I with Gene? I was just going to say, I was so thrilled. <laughs> I was just taking the pieces. They, they wrote three songs for us, and they were nifty songs. Oh, they were wonderful songs. So we sang three songs together in Shooting High, and uh, we just had a really good time. And for, well, up until two weeks before he passed away, we were the best of friends. 
Well, how did your relationship continue with Gene after just making that one film in 1940? Yes. Uh, did your paths cross during the years at other oh, events? Oh, we made it happen. We had to because we both had such very busy schedules. But, uh, and we'd talk a lot on the telephone and we'd go on his, his personal appearance tours just like me. Sometimes I thought, good gravy, wouldn't it wouldn't be neat if we'd be in the same town at the same time. But that never happened. But we always made we always made time for each other, always. And uh, I made five movies a year, and I don't know how many films he, he, he was made. doing six a year, I believe. Okay. That. When he first started, he might have been doing eight. But oh, good uh, you know they they wanted to save his I strength, have and most he did of six. Them. <laughs> oh, those are my prides and joys at home. Oh, they're so much fun. Aren't they still, nifty? they really. I just love every one of them. And, you know, and he wrote. He and Smiley Burnett wrote a song or two for each one. So he was not only a smart businessman later, he oh, knew uh, early on where the money was coming from, oh, music yeah. publishing. I know, and I love Champion. I had three horses of my own. Champ always knew me on the set. It was the cutest thing. He'd, he'd, I can't explain it except when he'd see me come, he'd go, hee, 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 and he just, he just knew me, you know. And that always meant so much to me too, because I love animals, dear Gussie. I, I feed everything in my sight at home, and I've always, I had at one time 39 dogs and 42 cats. Hi, I'm Rob Ward. I hope you enjoyed A Word on Westerns. It's an interview series we do. We post a new one every single week. If you missed any, just sign up for this little baby right here. Whoa.